Oh, it's the big day. Say hello. Hello. Today, I'm picking up the M3 Touring. I had a very short night's sleep. I've been waiting for this for, for ages. The car wasn't supposed to arrive so early, and I got a call saying it was here. I've actually already seen a photo of it, and I hopped on a flight late last night to come back down towards Nice, and I'm heading to BMW Nice now. From specking it, it's been like a five, six month process, and finally, the day is here of getting the M3 Touring. Nice Premium Motors. Okay, let's park this thing up and head in. I think it must be this one. There's, see right across there, a car under its cover. Anyways, we need to go in through another entrance, but the car is right on the other side of that window. Let's go. Bonjour. Bonjour. Ça va, Enchanté. Okay, I just got shown around the car and I just want to share all of this with you. So it's got the cover on now, we put the cover back on, but look, let's take this bad boy off. Here it is, the M3 Touring, brand new, it has 15 kilometers on the clock, which is just the coolest thing to see that. Black with the red interior, BMW M3 Touring, I love the way this has come out. Um, I spec'd it probably like three, four months ago. There was one change that we did, which I'll show you when we get inside. But overall, I wanted a kind of, you know, discreet spec on the outside and then something a little more spicy on the interior. So it's a black exterior, metallic black. You can tell we've got the 50th anniversary logo right here. Black grills. It's got the carbon at the front. So this was an option, a full exterior carbon pack. So you get the carbon here and then you'll see later on, I'll show you a bit further down the car what you get. They've also got the upgraded headlights with these blue finishes, which I think looks really nice also. Not only convenient and practical and will illuminate the road in front of you fantastically, but also just kind of design-wise looks kind of cool. I then kept the black theme going with the gloss black wheels. So these are the 19 inch in the front, 20 inch in the rear uh, gloss black wheels. Steel brakes, so huge calipers, but you can get an optional uh, ceramic uh, brake option, but it's like eight or 9,000 euros. And the car's not gonna do much track. If it ever does, it's gonna be very occasional, but I don't wanna use it a lot, put lots of miles on the clock. And so if you're then gonna have to replace the ceramic brakes from time to time, it's just so much more expensive and just way, way overkill. So yeah, standard brakes, but with the red finishing, which is gonna be complemented, you'll see by the interior, which will, I'll show you all the exterior, then we'll hop into the interior. On the carbon pack, you get the mirrors in carbon fiber as well, which I think is a really nice touch. You can tell there's a little camera here. There's cameras all over the place. You've got the full 360. It'll park itself. It's just technologically, it's amazing. My phone works as a key, which I know seems standard on a lot of new cars now, but I haven't had that on any car before, so I'm really pumped about having that. Uh, then round, round the back, it's incredible. This is the first time I actually see one in, in the flesh. I've never seen an M3 Touring before. And you've got these huge wheel arches which really stick out and look so mean from the rear. I think this is the angle where the car looks best. You've also got a kind of funny little rear winglet on top of this deck lid right here, which when you get close, is kind of hilarious to see, but adds to the whole kind of mean look of the, of the exterior. All completely blacked out here as well, the M3 competition logo, um, and then the carbon pack also gives you this carbon fiber rear diffuser. So it's got the four tailpipes you can get uh, with BMW M performance parts. So you can get all sorts of things, little extras, uh, carbon fiber extras around the car on the interior as well. And you can get an exhaust, which kind of puts these diagonal, diagonally mounted exhausts, which um, I, I'm sure they sound amazing. I've never actually heard them uh, for real before, but I prefer the way these look. They're massive tailpipes. So I've got this really nice, they gave me a really nice M performance key fob thing so i will pr i can use my apple watch or my phone as a key but just for today's sake i'm going to use this one so you got the boot right here fully automatic boot uh, you got about 500 liters of boot space which is really nice I, I forgot how you open this or you can open it that way there's loads of different ways to open this thing i need to get used to that very kindly gave me a little suitcase as well you can put the rear seats completely down and you've got well over a thousand liters of, of boot space but one thing i do love is if I put this back down, oh, oh. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna to need to get used to that, obviously. You can, look, open the glass here, which is really convenient if, and this is a very niche use case, but if we're filming um, to be able to put a photographer or something uh, in this and use this as a tracking car, it's amazing. 
So I've only ever seen this on BMW estates, have kind of always had this, or the Mercedes Giano. But um, to be able to have it on a tracking car with 510 horsepower, a twin turbocharged six cylinder engine is, is pretty nuts. Let me put this back on. I need to get used to this big time. There we go. Okay, then close this back up. There we go. You still got the 50th anniversary logos right there. But come to the interior. This is where I think this really comes into its own. So it's got the keyless go, which was uh, an option, I believe. And then here you've got this red interior, which I was a little bit worried about because I'd never seen it for real before. You see it on the configurator, but sometimes things are just quite different when you see them for real. And uh, it, it's really nice. I was worried it was going to be a bit too kind of light and uh, not look how I kind of wanted it to, but it's quite dark um, and not too flashy of an interior. I mean, <laughs> you notice it definitely, but it's a nice tone is what I mean. We then, this is what we changed last minute, is the extended leather pack. And um, I can show you this in the front as well, but basically this whole top part of the dash and of the doors, it was gonna be in like a, a fake leather type finish, um, not real leather, whereas last minute I was able to change the spec to get the extended leather. So you get these, the stitching, the contrast stitching and real leather on the top half of the dash. And cause that's a, a part of the car that you're in contact with quite a lot. I think that makes quite a big difference. And you've probably noticed the bucket seats. So it's got the sports seats, which I just think design wise look amazing yet to be tested in terms of comfort. I've never sat in them before, but they look so good that I just thought, you know what, I'll, I'll put up with it, whatever it is. I want to be able to have these seats full carbon. And then you've also got little details like the M um, stick, or like colors on the, on the, what do you call that? Seat belt, there we go, that's the word. Okay, let's sit in the front. The front seat is in my driving position and I sit super close to the steering wheel. So you hop in and these are proper buckets. So you're held in, in so nicely. You can adjust it right here with the button. You can adjust how tight your seat's gonna be basically. Fully electric, which for a carbon bucket is, is pretty nice. Um, you do have these weird, I don't know if you can see it here, like carbon parts in the middle. I'm sure you guys have seen them before. I, I don't, I'm not sure, they do get, take a bit of getting used to, but it actually feels kind of natural in the end once you're in it. They look like they'd be more uncomfortable than they, at least for now, feel. Full carbon fiber interior pack. So the steering wheel is all finished in carbon. Um, you've got your M1 and M2 uh, buttons, which have just become really famous. So basically you set up settings, your individual settings for each one of those. And so it just means you can access your different drive modes the way you want them really quickly. The paddles as well uh, for the double clutch gearbox. Again, what I quite liked about the red interior is that the M1 and M2 buttons are red and the plus and minus on the paddles are red. So even if you've got the blue or the orange interior, those remain red and I just thought it, it complemented quite nicely. The carbon comes all around the interior here, full carbon pack on the inside. It's a real slab of proper real carbon, none of that kind of fake carbon stuff that you see often in, in, in a lot of cars today. And when I've actually done quite a few miles with the car, we'll go through all of the systems, exactly how they work and everything. But for now, the car's got 15 kilometers on the clock. I'll do, of course, a first drive video. I'm actually not doing the first drive today. The car's gonna go on a truck and it's going straight to get PPF. It's actually gonna be a matte PPF, which I think will look, will look kind of cool to protect the car and give it kind of a... I've, I kept seeing on Instagram matte uh, empty tourings, which looked amazing. And I thought that, oh, that was a, the right balance where the paint was cheaper if it was gloss, it's less maintenance. And with the PPF, it's protected. So here you can also see the, the red leather on the bottom part of the dash came with that extended leather option as well. So it's black on top, red on the bottom, but if you don't have that option, it's all black and it's all this material right here, which is, you see, a bit more scratchy, not quite the same quality. I've already left a mark here. This is for your sunglasses, by the way. Harman and Carden, which sounds amazing. We did a test earlier. <laughs> and it sounded fantastic. It's impossible to show you the interior without showing you this screen. So huge double digital uh, screen. So you got your digital dash right here, which if I just switch that on properly, well, I can actually switch the engine on. There you go. I need to kind of get used to exactly how it works, but you can get your sat nav there, you can get a lap timer, you can get your G-forces, you can get all sorts of different information on that screen in front of you. 
you've got Ca Apple CarPlay and all that jazz, of course. Um, and yeah, basically the, the way this system works, it's a whole new interface for BMW. Maybe it's easier if you come on this side and I can show you. So look, when you're in here, first of all, it's just really intuitive, feels great, responds really nicely to any input you're gonna put in there. You've got, of course, your Apple CarPlay and all that stuff. Um, you also have uh, one called Dry Recorder. So it's got cameras all around the car. And for example, we just filmed one in the, in the dealership here. So you've got all these different angles. So if you're doing, if you're on track or if you're in a convoy or whatever, and you want to be able to see what's going on around the car, you can access it there. Or if you want through your app, you can actually see all the cameras live. You have the sat nav and all of your different drive modes. So if I put my BMW M modes, I can go between road, sport and track. But then you can also set up your various M1 and uh, M2 modes. Again, we'll get into that in more detail. But overall, this screen is amazing. It's in a matte finish, so you don't get too many marks. And it's quite nicely done so that you can hold the back right here while you're driving and be able to, uh, to go through it. Awesome, awesome interior, heated steering wheel, everything you need, heated seats, even though they're bucket seats, everything you need to crunch miles in this car. And that's the aim of it. It's the first time I've actually got a genuinely practical car I can take my podcast equipment in the back. I can have friends in the back. Um, I can film from and use it as a tracking car. Crunch miles in total comfort, but I've still got 510 horsepower under the hood. I'm so excited. A huge thank you to BMW and Nice here who helped me get the car early, do the spec exactly the way I wanted it. And have just been genuinely so nice, uh, giving me a few little accessories here and, and uh, yeah, just be opening their doors really nicely to me. And my first ever BMW, my first ever M car. And I really look forward to, to, to this journey of experiencing what it's like to live with this car properly. So next video is gonna be PPF and then we're going on a first drive. I just drove it for the first time about 20 meters and it felt amazing. Here it is. The beast, ready to go in the truck already. All right, guys, I'm going to put Arnaud's link down below, who's taking the car over to Geneva to have its PPF done. But look at this. I think that's the angle right there. That's where this car looks meanest. I wish I was driving it away, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. Keep this paint job perfect. Next stop is the PPF place. So that'll be the next video. Lots of content coming with the M3 Touring. Uh, it's been awesome. The, these guys at BMW Nice have been just incredible. Took us out for lunch. The whole delivery service has been outrageous. I'm going to put the links down below if you guys need to transport a car anywhere in Europe. These are your guys and I'll see you for another video in the very, very near future. Take care. Thank you. Bye bye.